our heavenly father in the name of Jesus Baba yetu wa mbinguni kwa jina la Yesu We thank you because you are such a great God Tunakushukuru kwa sababu wewe ni Mungu mkuu You have loved us with everlasting love Umetupenda kwa upendo wa milele That's why you sent your son Jesus that he may die on the cross so that he may purchase us Hii ndio sababu ukamtuma mwana wako wa pekee Yesu Kristo akufa msalabani kwa sababu ya kutununua. We are grateful to you for such an opportunity to be found in your house. Tunashukurani kuu kwa sababu ya kupatikana katika nyumba yako. So Jehovah God we want to thank you for this evening service. Na hivyo basi Jehovah Mungu nakushukuru kwa sababu ya ibada ya jioni. We thank you for everyone that has been able to come. Tunakushukuru kwa sababu ya kila mmoja ambaye ameweza kufika. We thank you for our online viewers. Tunakushukuru kwa sababu ya tazamaji katika mtandaoni. We pray for all of us this evening that you may minister to us Taombea si sote ili Bwana ukatuhudumie I release your grace of restoration upon our lives Naachilia neema ya urejesho juu ya maisha yetu That Lord you may reach at the depths of our hearts and minister to our souls Kwamba Bwana utafika katika vilindi vya mioyo yetu na hudumie nafsi zetu I pray that none of us will be the same again Nasema, after attending and listening to your word this evening Nasema kwamba hakuna mmoja atabaki vile baada ya kupokea kuingia na kupokea neno lako jioni ya leo We thank you because you are faithful Tunakushukuru kwa sababu wewe ni mwaminifu That which we have committed to you we pray Kile ambacho Bwana umetupatia twaomba That you may be able to accomplish ili tukaweze kutimiza and fulfill it at our time na kukitimiza katika wakati wetu i pray someone listening to me this evening naomba kwamba mtu anayenisikiliza usiku wa leo touched by your word ataguzwa neno lako and will be revived na atavuvuliwa will be set free atafunguliwa will be healed of their diseases and sicknesses ataponywa magonjwa yake na maradhi yake i pray that a miracle is going to take place naomba kwamba muujiza utatendeka as per your word We thank you Jehovah God. Tunakushukuru Jehovah Mungu. We worship you. Na tunakuabudu. Receive all the glory. Pokea utukufu wote. And all the honor. Na heshima yote. In Jesus name. Kwa jina la Yesu. We pray and believe. Tumeomba na kuamini. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you so much our um, viewers. Asandeni sana watazamaji wetu. Thank you for those who have turned up for the service today. Shukrani kwa wale ambao wameingia katika ushirika wa jioni ya leo. We can be seated in the presence of God. Waweza kuketi katika uwepo wa Mungu. Uh, we thank God for such an opportunity that he has given us again to be in his house. Tumshukuru pia kwa sababu ya kupatia nafasi nyingine tena pia kupatikana katika nyumba yake. I am Reverend Mano. Anaitwa Reverend Mano and I'm grateful that um, Bishop has, and Mom has given me a, an opportunity to minister in on this altar today. Ninashukurani kwa askofu kwa kunipatia nafasi ya kuweza kuhudumu katika madhabahu haya siku ya leo. We appreciate the grace that is at work. Na hivyo basi tunashukuru kwa sababu ya ile neema ambayo inatenda kazi through his servants. Kupitia maisha yake. I want us to share this evening on the theme of this month. Ningependa tushiriki leo kuhusu ile mada ya mwezi huu. We have been talking about commanding the grace of restoration. Tumekuwa tukiamurisha uh, uh, neema ya kuamurisha uh, urejesho. And so this evening we want to continue on that theme. Na hivyo basi jioni ya leo tunataka kuendelea na hiyo mada. And I know God is going to minister to each one of us. Na naamini kwamba Mungu atahudumia kila mmoja wetu. Um we are going to read from the word of God. Tutaenda kusoma kutoka kwa neno la Mungu. But before we read from the scriptures. Lakini kabla hatuja soma maandiko. Allow me to say in introduction. Mkaniruhusu basi nilete utangulizi that the word restoration ya kwamba neno urejesho all to restore ama kurejesha it appears in the bible king james version inaonekana katika e, biblia hiyo aina ya king james version 136 times mara 136 and there is a reason why the word of god will repeat itself 136 times na kuna sababu ya kwamba neno la Mungu litaenda kujirudia mara 136 i believe there is something that that god wants to restore in our lives naamini ya kwamba kuna kitu Mungu atarejesha katika maisha yetu even in this year 
that we are believing God for divine increase. Hata katika huu mwaka ambapo tumwamini Mungu kwa kuongezeka kiungu, that divine increase will take place when there is true restoration. Ya kwamba ya kuongezeka kwa kiungu kutafanyika kukiwa na urejesho wa kweli. And so this evening I'm talking uh, I'm speaking to us on the topic the steps to true restoration. Ye basi jioni ya leo nanena nanyi kuhusu zile hatua za urejesho wa kweli. The steps to our true restoration. Hatua za urejesho wetu wa kweli. We defined restoration to mean bringing back to the former position. Tukaelezea eh, urejesho kama kurudisha katika ile hali ya mwanzoni. Bringing back to the former condition kurejesha katika ile ule, ile sura ya mwanzoni meaning that at some point kumaanisha kwamba kufika mahali what you had might have disappeared or gone away or stolen kile ulichokuwa nacho kinaweza kuwa kilibiwa ama kilienda ama kilitwaliwa and so the process of getting it back na hivyo basi ule utaratibu wa kukipata tena is what we are calling restoration. Ndicho kile tunakiita urejesho. The promise of God on restoration offers the child of God hope. E ureje, e, hadi ya urejesho wa Mungu inampatia mtoto wa Mungu matumaini. That even if there is some loss, ya kwamba hata kama kuna kupoteza. Even if there is some uh, difficult situation you might have gone through hata kama kuna hali ngumu ambayo umepitia even if there is some desperation and an hopelessness that might have crept in as a result of loss hata kama kuna kuta, hali ya kutamauka na kukosa matumaini kwa sababu ya kupoteza matumaini god is able to restore us again mungu, to our former position mungu anaweza kuturejesha tena katika ile nafasi yetu ya hapo awali in the book of first samuel katika kitabu cha samueli wa kwanza actually second samuel eh samueli wa pili uh, chapter number 11 eh sura ya 11 uh, from verse 1 kuanzia mstari wa kwanza up to uh, chapter 12 verse 13 paka sura ya 12 mstari wa 13 in those two chapters katika hizi sura mbili starting with chapter 11 verse 1 tukianzia na sura ya kwanza msari, sura ya 11 mstari wa kwanza up to chapter 12 verse number 13 paka sura ya 12 mstari wa 13 it gives an account of king david inatoa hesabu ya daudi and how king david fell from the presence of god na vile daudi mfalme alianguka kutoka katika uwepo wa bwana I will not spend a lot of time explaining how he fell. Sitatumia wakati mwingi kuelezea vile alivyoanguka. But so that we may understand the process of restoration. Lakini hili tuelewe ule utaratibu wa urejesho. I believe it's important for us to understand some of the pitfalls that happened in his life which can help us to be able to learn lessons. Naamini ni vyema kwetu kuelewa yale mashimo aliyoanguka ili kwetu tukaweze kusoma mafunzo. Later I'll be referring to Psalms chapter 51. Baadaye nitakuwa narejelea Zaburi ya hamsina moja. which talk in depth about how God restored David. Bayafundisha kwa kina sana vile Mungu alimrejesha Daudi. But in verse 1 the Bible says Lakini mstari wa kwanza hapa Biblia inasema The last part of that verse Sehemu ya mwisho ya mstari You see this was a time of war Na huu ulikuwa wakati wa vita and kings with their men were supposed to be in the battlefield Na wafalme pamoja na watu wao walikuwa waende katika uwanja wa vita In other words the kingly anointing that was on David Maana kwamba ule upako wa kiuke kifalme ambao ulikuwa juu ya Daudi God had anointed him so that he could be leading the Israelites in victory through fighting a battle Mungu alikuwa amempaka mafuta ya ufalme ili awe anaongoza wana wa Israeli katika vita na katika kupata ushindi That 
is the same anointing that we have received. Na huu ndio pako ule ule ambao tumepokea. On getting to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Kuhusu kumjua Yesu Kristo kama mwokozi wa mtu binafsi. After becoming a child of God. Baada ya kufanyika mtoto wa Mungu. We have an assignment ahead of us. Tunayo kazi ambayo iko mbele yetu. There is work that is cut out for you and for me. Kuna kazi ambayo imetengwa kwako na kwangu. And as we do the work of God. Na tunapofanya kazi ya Mungu. We are fighting against forces. Tunapigana na nguvu. The forces of evil. Nguvu za uovu. Forces of Satan. Nguvu za shetani. That do not want you to succeed. Ambazo hazitaki wewe ukifaulu. I wish David knew the secret. Haiti Daudi angalitambua ile siri. He would not have remained in Jerusalem. Zeye hange bakia kule kule Yerusalemu. The Bible says. Biblia inasema. But David remained in Jerusalem. Lakini Daudi mwenyewe akabaki kule Yerusalemu. I wish somebody would get this revelation this evening. Haiti mtu angapokea ufunuo huu ya siri. That we would be found where God wants us to be. Kwamba utapatikana pale Mungu anataka upatikane. But not in the wrong place. Lakini sio mahali pabaya. I wish everybody would understand when it is time for evening service like today. Natumai kila mtu angeelewa kama wakati wa ushirika wa jioni kama we jioni leo. We found in the presence of God. Angepatikana katika uwepo wa Mungu. So that we may hear the word of God. Ili tuweze kusikia neno la Mungu. That will bring a change in our lives. Hale taleta mab liko katika maisha yetu Praise the name of the Lord God bless you for turning up today Mungu abariki kwa kuja leo God bless you for connecting to this evening service Mungu abariki kwa kuunganika na ushirika wa jioni ya leo Verse two, the Bible says Dari wa pili Biblia inasema that David instead of being away and joining the the armies in the battlefield Badala ya Daudi kuwa kule mbali na kuunganika na Ma, majeshi ya Mungu he was walking around alikuwa tu anajiza tembea tembea tu katika the maeneo roof of the palace katika eh, dari la jumba la kifalme let me tell you washeni waambi the moment you are not where god was, wants you to be wakati unajipata mahali ambapo Mungu anakutaka uwe the devil will always give you a substitute e shetani atakupatia kitu cha kubadilishiwa he will always give you an assignment that you will be able to do atakupatia kazi ili uwe unafanya which may not be in line with the assignment that god has given you as a child of god ambayo sio sawa sawa na ile kazi mungu amepatia mtoto wake And so the first mistake that David did. Na kwa hivyo makosa moja ya kwanza ambayo Daudi alifanya. Been found in the wrong place. Ni kupatikana mahali ambapo si pasawa. That is why the psalmist Ndio sababu mwimbaji akasema that blessed is a man. Akasema heri yule mtu. I am sure that is Psalms 1 verse 1. Blessed is a man. Eh hiyo ni zaburi ya kwanza na msari wa kwanza. Heri yule mtu. Now put us there. Psalms 1 verse 1. Tupeleke hapo zaburi za kwanza na msari wa kwanza. You know being found in the right place. Huwa unapatikana mahali pasawa. And not in the wrong place. Na si mahali ambapo hapafai. Blessed is a man who does not walk in the counsel of the of the ungodly. Heri mtu yule asiyekwenda katika shauri la wasio haki. Nor stand in the way of sinners. Wala hakusimama katika njia ya wakosaji. No sit in the seat of the scornful. Wala haketi barazani pa wenye mizaha. I pray this evening. Basi jioni ya leo ninaomba. God is going to release his blessing of increase in the year 2024. Kama Mungu ataachilia baraka zake za kuongezeka katika mwaka 2024. Then we must be found in the right place and not in the wrong place. Basi lazima tupatikane mahali panapofaa na si mahali ambapo hapafai. Just imagine the time you are supposed to be sleeping. Hey babu fikiria ile wakati ambao wastahili kuona lala at midnight hey, usiku wa manadi someone is watching that pornography in his in, 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 in his phone all media all whatever wakati huo sasa mtu anaangalia video za watu huchi katika uh, simu yake ama katika runinga yake 
instead of being found with a company of people that will add value to you badala ya kupatikana katika kikundi cha watu ambao wataongezea thamani katika maisha yako that is what happened with king david sasa hivyo ndivyo kulifanyika na mfalme daud and so in verse 2 3 up to 4 na hivyo basi mstari wa 2 wa 3 na wa 4 we see his eyes being lured tunaona macho yake yakielekezwa mahali kubaya i am sure the guy should have been busy praying for the armies so that they may win the battle naamini hata angekuwa akimaanisha katika maombi ya kiwaombea na jeshi waweze kushinda even if, even if he was not in the battle field for hata, whatever reason hata kama hakupatikana katika uwanja wa vita kwa sababu ile yote but let me tell you lakini waambie the moment we are in the wrong place ule wakati ambapo tunajipata mahali ambapo always bring other substitutes shetani atatuletea kazi zingine that will divert us from the plan of god in our lives ambazo zitatutoa katika mpango wa Mungu kuhusu maisha yetu to cut the story short he kufupisha ile hadithi ndefu david sees a woman who was taking a bath naked daudi akamwona mwanamke aliyekuwa anapinga mbizi akiwa uchi the wife of one of his soldiers by the name uria basi askari mmoja wake wa jeshi jina lake aitwaye uria and the wife by the name bethsheba naye mke wake jina lake bethsheba the bible says that he, he discovered that he, although he had his own wife tatambua kwamba hata ingawa alikuwa na wake zake in fact he has he had, he had his own wives hakika alikuwa na wake zake that he could be able to see others who are better lakini akaweza kuona wengine ambao ni bora may god help us this evening mungu atusaidie jioni ya leo i rebuke the spirit of being found in the wrong place akemea roho wa kupatikana mahali ambapo si pasawa because that will divert our attention from our main focus and we focus on things that will take us away from god kwa sababu hiyo itatuondoa katika uh, kule 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 umakini wetu na kutupelekea kupeleka mahali kwingine ambapo eh, si mahali ambapo Mungu anataka. And so the second thing that takes place. Na hivyo basi jambo la pili ambalo lafanyika. David begins to admire a woman who is not his wife. Daudi akaanza kumtamani mwanamke ambaye si mke wake. He commits the sin of adultery later. Anafanya dhambi ya usinzi baadaye. Because the eyes had been stolen, his eyes had been stolen. Kwa sababu macho yake yalikuwa yameibiwa. His body had been stolen. Mwili wake pia ulikuwa umeibiwa. So that he could be able to admire others and not the person whom he supposed to admire his very own wife ili aweze kutamani wake wengine na sio yule mke wake ambaye ni mke wake aswa another step of going down for him atua nyingine ya kuanguka kwake he, 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 he schemes how he will kill the wife of bethsheba akapangisha njama ya vile atamuua mume mume wa bethsheba and so he sends a message to the soldiers who were who were in charge at the battle ground hivyo basi akatumanisha ujumbe kwa wale askari ambao walikuwa wamesimamia vita vile that he may be put in the battle front ili awekwe katika mstari wa kwanza katika vita and so you see somebody scheming a uh, a uh, murder na unaona mtu anapangisha njama ya mawaji how someone else should be killed jinsi mtu mwingine ataenda kuuawa and after he killed uria na baada ya kumuua uria and he confirms that he is dead na anadhibitisha kuona kwamba ni kweli amekufa the spirit of evil and diversion comes to him again eh jambo la uovu na kupelekwa kwingine basi kaja kwake and he takes the wife of someone else and sleeps with her basi anamtoa mke wa mtu mwingine na analala pamoja naye he commits the sin of adultery anafanya dhambi ya usinzi thereafter hapo baadaye because god had anointed david sababu mungu alikuwa amempaka daudi mafuta and because god loved david na kwa sababu mungu alimpenda daudi even in the state that he was in hata katika hiyo hali ambayo alikuwa ndani yake he sends his prophet nathan anamtuma nabii ya nabii wake nathan and he goes to david and speaks to him anaenda kuongea na daudi and he asks him about the evil and the bad thing that had happened in his life even to commit murder and kill somebody anamwambia ile jambo mbaya na ile tukio mbaya ambayo ameifanya katika maisha yake hata kupangisha njama ya kuua mtu now that takes me now to the book of 
uh, Psalms chapter 51. We want now to go to the book of Psalms chapter 51. Now, in this chapter, Katika, uh, David writes this chapter after going through a difficult period in his life. Daudi anaandika sura hii baada ya kupitia katika hali ngumu ya maisha maisha yake. I am sure the spirit of God had left him. Nina hakika kwamba roho mtakatifu wa Mungu alikuwa amemwacha. And emptiness had come in his life. Na utupu ulikuwa umeingia katika maisha yake. If there is a thing that we should contend in this month of commanding the grace of restoration. Kama kuna kitu ambacho tunasheli kupigana nacho katika mwezi wa kuamrisha neema ya urejesho. Is to tell God that he may not take away the Holy Spirit from our lives. Ni kumuuliza Mungu kumsii ya kwamba asimuondoe Roho Mtakatifu wake ndani ya maisha yake. The Holy Spirit is taken away. Wakati Roho Mtakatifu ameondolewa. From the life of a believer. Kutoka kwa maisha ya muumini. He becomes an empty vessel. Yeye anafanyika chombo kitupu. Emptiness comes in. Na utupu unaingia Life loses meaning. Maisha anapoteza umaarufu wake. And when life loses meaning, na maisha anapopoteza urudi. You begin to hear a family has broken down. Unaanza kusikia familia imevunjika. You hear someone has committed suicide. Umesikia mtu amejitia kitanzi. Because life has lost meaning. Maana maisha yamepoteza maana. May we never go to those extremes. Tusiwahi fika huo upande. And because David was a man after God's own heart. Na kwa sababu Daudi alikuwa na moyo wa Mungu. Even in the, the, the level of desperation. Hata katika eh, kiwango cha kuvunjika moyo. Even when he found himself with no peace. Hata alipojipata mwenyewe hana amani. I am sure he would go to sleep at night. Naamini angeenda kulala usiku. And the words of the prophet Nathan would ring in his in his mind na neno la nabii nadhani lingepiga kengele katika akili yake and he had no peace na yeye akakosa amani and because of loss of peace in his life na kwa sababu ya ukosefu wa amani katika maisha yake the bible says he tore his clothes ile inasema kwamba akarua mavazi yake and he put on sackcloth na akavalia magunia and he repented Bitterly before God. Na katubu kwa 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 uchungu sana mbele za Mungu. And now he writes the book of Psalms 51. Na sasa anaandika sura ya Zaburi ya 51. After he has gone through a very difficult experience in his life. Baada ya kupatia katika hali ngumu ya maisha yake. I know I'm speaking to someone this evening. Najua ninaongea na mtu jioni ya leo. Who has gone through issues in life? Ambaye amepitia mambo magumu katika maisha. Someone was gone through suffering. Mtu ambaye amepitia mateso. Someone who has gone through an experience that is not good. Mtu ambaye amepitia katika uzoevu fulani ambao si mzuri. And at some point they find that life is meaningless. Na katika hali mali fulani amepata maisha hayana maana. The Bible says in verse 1 Biblia inasema mstari wa kwanza that have mercy upon me kwamba Bwana huwa na fadhili kwangu oh god according to your loving kindness ewe Mungu kulingana na rehema zako according to the multitude of thy tender mercies blot out my transgression yes cha wingi wa rehema zako uyafute makosa yangu that is the first step sasa hiyo ndiyo hatua ya mwanzoni confession kutubu confession of our sins kutubu dhambi zetu for true restoration to come in ili urejesho wa kweli uje for god to be able to re, to return us back to our former condition ili mungu aweze kuturudisha katika hali yetu ya mwanzoni we must remember the words of god in the book of psalms uh, 51 verse 1 lazima tukumbuke neno la mungu katika zaburi ya 51 mstari wa 1 david cried to god daudi akamlilia mungu i am sure he saw no need of going to see someone else for encouragement because his help comes from God. Hakika aniona hakuna maana ya kupokea kutiwa moyo kwa mtu kwa kwa kutoka kwa mtu mwingine kwa sababu aliona kutiwa moyo kwake kunatoka tu kwa Mungu. He repented from the depths of his heart. Yeye akatubu kutoka katika vilindi vya moyo wake. I am speaking to someone this evening. Ninaongea na mtu ajioni ya leo. That regardless of how far things may have gone wrong or bad. Ya kwamba kando na vile mambo yameharibika. Regardless of the loss in your business. 
kando na kule kupoteza katika biashara yako regardless of how things may not be working in your family kando vile mambo yafanye kazi katika jamii yako i am proposing a formula to us this evening mimi nawapendekezea utaratibu jioni ya leo turning to god in genuine repentance and prayer kumgeukea Mungu kwa kutubu kwa kweli na maombi David confessed his sins before God Daudi anakiri anatubu dhambi zake mbele za Mungu and he asks God to be able to forgive him of all his transgressions Na anamuuliza Mungu ili amsamee makosa yake yote He discovers that sin has separated him from Ana, God Anatamboya kwamba dhambi imemtanganisha na Mungu wake and that true peace and joy comes from God. Na kwamba eh, 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 amani na eh, furaha ya kweli inatoka kwa Mungu. It comes from God. Inatoka kwa Mungu. Not the material property that he possessed at that time. Sio ile mali alikuwa amekusanya wakati ule. As a king, kama mfalme, he had the privilege of enjoying the best things in that country. Alikuwa na fursa ya kufurahia vitu bora kabisa katika nchi. Including staying in the best mansion of that time. Pamoja na kukaa katika ile nyumba ya kifahari nyakati zile. But that did not satisfy him. Lakini hiyo haikumtosheleza. That did not give him peace. Hiyo haikumpa amani. Look at verse 3. Tazama mstari wa 3. Still on true confession and repentance. Juu ya kukiri na kutubu kwa kweli. That he acknowledged his transgressions. Kwamba katambua makosa yake. And his sin. Na dhambi yake. And he tells God forgive my sins O oh Lord. Na anamuuliza Mungu amsamee dhambi zake. And blot them out of my life. Na ziondoe katika maisha yake. May God help us this evening. Mungu natusaidie jioni ya leo. That for true restoration to take place. Ili kwamba eh, eh, kukiri kwa kutubu kwa kweli kufanyike. We need to recognize that God is everything to our lives. Urejeshi wa kweli ili ukaweze kufanyika tujue ya kwamba Mungu ndiyo kila kitu katika maisha yetu. He owns everything. Yeye humiliki kila kitu. We belong to him. Sisi pia ni wake. And therefore regardless of how far we run away. Na hivyo kinyume na vile mbali tunaweza kwenda. We will still need God to get into our situation and solve our issues. Tazidi kumhitaji Mungu ili aendelee maisha yetu na kusuluhisha mambo yetu. That David did. E jambo la muhimu ambalo Daudi alifanya. Step number two. Hatua ya pili. He discovered that cleansing in verse 7. Go to verse 7 please. Twende mstari wa 7. Verse 7. Let's go to verse 7. Mstari wa 7. Somebody work on the sound is is not clean, clear. Mstari wa 7. Yes. Now, give me NIV. Ne now, purge me with absop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Unisafishe kwa hisopo, nami nitakuwa safi. Unioshe, nami nitakuwa mweupe kuliko theluji. Now, David discovers sasa Daudi anatambua the solution for the problem that he found himself in suluhisho ya ile shida aliyojipata ndani yake required cleansing inahitaji kusafishwa it required being washed as white as snow inahitaji kusafishwa na kuwa mweupe I kama theluji i to us this evening na watangazia jioni ya leo the blood of jesus that was shed on the cross of calvary damu ya yesu iliyomwagwa msalabani It washes every sin in our lives. Inasafisha kila dhambi katika maisha yetu. That is why the Bible says even if our sins as uh, as white as crumbs uh, as red as crimson. Na hii ndio sababu inasema uh, kwamba hata kama dhambi zenu ni nyekundu. God is able to cleanse us completely Mungu by an... the blood of Jesus. Mungu anaweza kutusafisha kabisa kwa damu ya Yesu Kristo. And so I declare this evening to us. Na hivyo basi jioni ya leo nawatangazia. That the blood of Jesus is able to cleanse every iniquity. Kwamba damu ya Yesu Kristo ina uwezo wa kuosha kila makosa. Every sin in our life kila dhambi katika maisha yetu with by the blood of Jesus. Naweza kuoshwa kabisa kwa damu ya Yesu Kristo. Not by being a good Christian sio kwa kufanyika mkristo mwema going to church every sunday anayeenda kanisani kila kila jumapili following certain rituals that people may think are good and can cleanse us and make us right with god kwa kufuata matambiko fulani ambayo unaweza kufikiria 
yaweza kuwafanya kuwa na haki na safi mbele za Mungu. Now I want us to look at step number 3. Ningependa tuangalie hatua ya tatu. Now verse 10 the Bible says. Sari wa 10 Biblia inasema. Uh, verse 10 of ya Psalms 51. Msari wa 10 Zaburi ya 51. Create in me a clean heart O God and renew a right spirit within me. E Mungu uniombie moyo safi uifanye upya roho iliyo tulia ndani yangu. Creating in me a clean heart is step number three. Uniambie moyo safi katika uh, safi ni hatua ya tatu. You know when God saves and delivers us from sin unajua wakati Mungu ametuokoa na kutukomboa kutoka kwa dhambi he removes the spirit of stone anaondoa ile roho ya mawe ya the jiwe the spirit of disobedience roho ya kukosa kutii and instead he puts in us the right spirit, the, the holy spirit na badala yake anaweka ndani yetu roho mtakatifu babani kweli the holy spirit who is quick to speak to our spirits so that we hearken to the word of God. Roho mtakatifu ambaye anaongea kwa roho zetu kwa haraka ili tuelewe na Mungu. David discovered Daudi akatambua that for him to be completely restored to God. Ili kwake ili aweze kurejeshwa kikamilifu kwa Mungu. He needed the God to create in him a new spirit, the spirit of God. Alihitaji Mungu arejeshe Roho Mtakatifu ndani yake. And that is what we need for our restoration in the Lord. Na hii ndio ndio tunataka kurejeshwa kwa kweli ndani ya Mungu. The Lord to create in us a new a right spirit within us. Mungu aumbe roho wa kweli ndani yetu. The spirit of obedience. Roho wa utiifu. The spirit that will listen and act to the word of God. Roho ambaye atatii na kufanya sawasawa na neno la Mungu. So that we may be able to please the Lord. Ili tukaweze kumpendeza Bwana. Now verse 17 and 19. Sari 17 19 give us our, our step number 4 zitatupatia hatua yetu ya nne. now look at verse 17 angalia msari wa 17 that the sacrifices of god are a broken spirit a broken and a contrite heart oh god thou will not despise the 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 bills za mungu ni roho iliyovunjika moyo uliovunjika na kupondeka e yeah. mungu hautadharau david discovers daudi anatambua that offering and sacrifices are good ya kwamba dhabihu na sadaka ni nzuri but they could not take away the guilt that was in him lakini haziwezi zikaondoa ile dhamira ambayo ilikuwa ndani yake he discovers a better sacrifice and a physical sacrifice akatambua dhabihu ya kweli na dhabihu ya ya kutoa a broken and contrite spirit e roho iliyovunjika moyo ulio pondeka that one god will not despise sasa hiyo mungu hata idharau for us to experience true a re- restoration wetu ili tupokee tupate urejesho wa kweli i put it to us this evening basi na nawaambia na wapatie jioni ya leo that we need to go before god with a broken spirit ya kwamba tuastahili kwenda mbele za mungu na roho iliyovunjika ready to be molded tukiwa tayari kutekuumbwa ready to be to, to, to be to be to be molded like clay tukiwa tayari kuumbwa kama vile udongo because god is is able to break the spirit of 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 of, of stone in our lives ba mungu anaweza kuvunja ile roho ya mawe katika mioyo yetu wa maisha yetu bless it with the spirit of flesh na badala yake aweke roho ya mwili allow me to share with you four things as i finish Ruhusu nishiriki nanyi vitu vinne ninapomaliza. That will happen when a true restoration comes in a believer's life. Bado tafanyika wakati urejeshi wa kweli utakuja katika maisha ya muumini. That will show as evidence of someone who has been completely transformed and changed. Bado tunaonyesha dhahiri ishara za mtu ambaye amebadilishwa kabisa. The first one ya kwanza that Uh, Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 2 Ezekiel 36 msari wa 2 Now look at what Ezekiel 36 verse 2 says Ezekiel 36 msari wa 2 unasema The Bible says Biblia yasema God is able to replace our hearts with the spirit of stone Now look at this Angalia hapo 
the spirit of stone Ro. being replaced with the spirit of flesh Roho wa jiwe akiondolewa na bani lake kunawekwa roho wa mwili. I'm sure it is not that one. It is replacing the spirit of stone with the spirit of flesh. Ni kuondoa roho wa mawe na kuweka roho wa mwili. I'm talking about replacement when God has replaced the spirit uh, of disobedience, the spirit that is not listening to the spirit of God in our lives. Kutoa roho isiyo tii, isiyo sikia, isiyo nyekea mbele za Mungu katika maisha. And blessing it with the spirit of flesh. Namba lake kuweka roho wa mwili. The prophet Ezekiel had noted. E nabii Ezekiel alitambua that for us to be molded to the vessels that God wants to use in this particular time. Ili sisi Mungu atuumbe katika vile vyombo ambavyo anaweza kufitumia wakati huu. Verse 26 the Bible says. Sari ni 26 tunasema. That a new heart also will I give you. Nami nitawapa ninyi moyo mpya. I am sure this is what King David desired as he went to God in a broken spirit and a contrite heart. Naamini kwamba hii ndio Daudi alitamani alipokwenda mbele za Mungu akiwa na roho iliyovunjika na moyo uliopendeka mbele za Mungu that a new heart that i will give you ya kwamba moyo mpya nitampa that i will take away the spirit the stony heart the spirit of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh kwamba nitatoa moyo wa jiwe uliomo ndani ya mwili wenu nami nitawapa moyo wa nyama i pray for every believer listening to me this evening naombea kila muumini anayenisikiliza jioni ya leo that god will substitute in our hearts ya kwamba mungu ataweka ndani yetu the spirit that is uh, full of self centeredness the spirit of self centeredness and give us the spirit of selflessness na tupatie roho ambayo haina ubinafsi a spirit that is able to be corrected and, and accept correction roho ambayo yaweza kupondeka inayokubali makosa yake that is what ezekiel the prophet prayed na hivyo ndivyo nabii ezekiel alivyoomba this will be evidence of true restoration huta itakuwa ni dirisho ya kurejeshwa kweli then the second thing that will manifest itself after true repent true uh, restoration has taken place jambo la pili ambalo itakuwa dirisho kweli baada ya urejesho wa kweli kufanyika being renewed in our minds kufanywa upya katika nia zetu Romans chapter 12 verse 2 the bible says Warumi 12 mstari wa 2 biblia inasema Romans chapter 12 verse 2 ni warumi 12 mstari wa pili. The Bible talks about the renewal of our mind. Biblia inaongea kuhusu kule kuishwa that e, kufanywa upya nia zetu. Be not conformed to the world. Wala msifuatishe namna za dunia hii. But be transformed. Bali mgeuzwe by the renewing of the mind. Kwa kufanywa upya nia zetu. When our minds are renewed. Wakati akili zetu zimeishwa. When our thinking process and pattern is, is renewed and changed. Wakati mautaratibu na mifumo ya akili zetu zimefanywa upya. Even upi. our actions. Hata matendo yetu. Our, our speech is also transformed. Hata uneni wetu, semi wetu unabadilishwa of life is completely transformed maisha yetu yanabadilishwa kamilifu this is what paul uh, arise to the romans hivi ndivyo paulo anawaandikia warumi that the renewing of their mind ya kwamba kule kufanywa upya ni azaa and for the mind to be renewed is a daily affair na kuishwa ama kufanywa upya kwa nia ni jambo la kila siku that we may know the will of god which is good ili tupate kujua mapenzi ya mungu ambayo ni mema which is acceptable ya nayo pendeza which is perfect ambayo ni makamilifu that is what characterized the life of david in chapter 51 of the book of psalms hiyo ndio ile jaa maisha ya daudi moyo wa daudi katika zaburi ya 51 seeking the will of god kutafuta mapenzi ya mungu requires a mind that is renewed and transformed uhitaji akili ambayo imefanywa upya na ambayo imebadilishwa then number three, evidence of restored life of a believer ishara ya tatu ya kuonyesha kwamba 
eh, eh, maisha ya muumini yabadilishwa Romans chapter 6 verse 4 Warumi 6 mstari wa 4 Now let's go there the same book of Romans Hapo tu Warumi 6 Romans 6 verse 4 Warumi 6 mstari wa 4 Now the Bible says that we have been raised from the dead by the glory of the Father that we would walk in the newness of life Biblia inasema kwamba basi tulizikwa pamoja naye kwa njia ya ubatiso katika mauti yake kusudi kama Kristo alivyo fufuka katika wafu kwa njia ya utukufu wa baba vivyo hivyo na sisi tuenende katika upya wa uzima. Our bishop last Sunday talked about a new beginning. Easkofu wetu Jumapili iliyopita alihubiri kuhusu mwanzo mpya opening a new chapter kufungua sura mpya as a sign of true restoration kama ishara ya urejesho wa kweli walking in the newness of life kutembea katika upya wa maisha will require certain things to be put to death kutahitaji vitu vingine viuliwe and then we resurrect in the lord na tufufuke ndani ya bwana in other words the spirit of god will revive in us and bring us the true nature of god hivi roho mtakatifu ndani yetu atatufufua na kutupatia ile 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 ule uungu ndani yetu so that we connect to the grace that comes from above so that we may live a new life. Ili tunganike na neema itokayo juu mbinguni ili tuishi maisha mapya. The last thing that I'm talking about this evening is found in Romans chapter 5 verse 10. Kitu cha mwisho ambacho tutaongea naye juu yake ujione leo ni Warumi 5 mstari wa 10. Now look at Romans 5:10. Angalia Warumi 5 mstari wa 10 that we have been reconciled to God by the death of his son much more being reconciled and we shall be saved by his life kwa maana ikiwa tulipokuwa dui tulipatanishwa na Mungu kwa mauti ya mwana wake zaidi sana baada ya kupatanishwa tutaokolewa katika uzima wake now this is being returned to our former self sasa hii ni ile hali ya kurudishwa katika ule utu wetu hapo mwanzoni being restored to our former position kurejeshwa katika ile nafasi yetu ya hapo mwanzoni look at jeremiah chapter uh, 30 verse 17 jeremiah 30 mstari wa 17 utazame the bible msari. talks about restoration biblia inaongea kuhusu urejesho that i will restore you to your health kwamba nitakurejesha kwa afya yako and heal your wounds na kuponya jeraha zako god is willing to put us in our former state mungu anatutamani sana kutudisha katika hali zetu za mwanzo i don't care what the devil has taken away from us mimi sijali kile shetani ameondoa kwetu i don't care the level at which we might have fallen away from the grace sijali kile kiwango ambacho tumewanguka kutoka kwa neema ya mungu but i want to assure you this evening lakini ningependa kuhakishia jioni hii the moment we go to god with a spirit that is broken. Ule wakati tunapoenda kwa Mungu tukiwa na roho ambayo amevunjika. Confessing our transgressions and sins before him. Tukitupa makosa yetu na dhambi zetu kwake. And asking him to cleanse cleanse our lives by the blood of Jesus. Na kumuuliza ili atakase maisha yetu kwa damu ya Yesu Kristo. And creating a new spirit within us. Na kuumba roho mpya ndani yetu. Then God is going to restore us back to our former self. Basi Mungu ataenda kuturejesha katika ile nafasi yetu ya mwanzo. Anything that we might have lost Na kila kitu ambacho tumepoteza. David lost almost everything. Daudi alipoteza karibu kila kitu. He found himself completely empty. Akajipata mwenyewe akiwa tupu. And he went to God and told him to restore his Holy Spirit in his life. Na akamrudia Mungu akamuuliza amrejeshee Roho Mtakatifu wake ndani ya maisha. He able to restore anything that we might have lost. Mungu anaweza kurejesha kila kitu ambacho labda umepoteza. You might have lost your health. Unaweza kuwa umepoteza afya yako. Through sicknesses and diseases. Kupitia magonjwa na maradhi. The Bible says by the stripes of Jesus. Biblia inasema kwa mapigo ya Yesu Kristo tumepona. So this evening the package of restoration is is so great. Na hivyo basi eh jioni ya leo the package of restoration kifurushi cha urejesho ni kikubwa sana. We only need to stretch ourselves. 
kwamba twasaini sisi wenyewe kujivuta and tell god that we need our portion na kumuuliza mungu tuahitaji sehemu yetu we need to be fast of the word of god tunahitaji kuwekwa kuojazwa neno la mungu we need to be found in the right place tafaa tupatikane katika mahali pasawa so that as god releases his blessings upon our lives ili kwamba mungu anapoachilia baraka zake juu ya maisha yetu we may be the first beneficiaries basi tuwe wanaofaidika wa kwanza i want us to be upstanding ningependa basi tukasimame as we finish our service tunapotamatisha ibada yetu We thank God this evening. Na tunamshukuru Mungu jioni ya leo. For teaching us on the steps to true restoration. Kwa kutufundisha sisi hatua za urejesho wa kweli. The business of heaven. Ile harakati ya mbingu is about us being right with God. Ni kuhusu sisi tukiwa na hali ya sawa na Mungu. Being reconciled to God. Tukipatanishwa na Mungu. Having a relationship with our heavenly Father. Tukiwa na uhusiano na baba yetu wa mbinguni. Sealing every loophole. Kufunga kila nafasi. And every doorway that the enemy may open. Na kila mlango ambao shetani anaweza fungua. This evening I feel set to seal every doorway in our lives jioni ya leo najihisi niko tayari kufunga kila mwanya katika maisha yetu as we release our lives to god tunapoachilia maisha yetu kwa mungu i want us to tell god that we want to be found in the right place at the right time ningependa basi tumuulize mungu tupatikane mahali pasa wakati unaofaa and not to be found in the wrong place. Sitakupatikana mahali ambapo ni pabaya. We want to receive our share of blessings. Tunataka kupokea sehemu yetu ya baraka. Let us pray. Wacheni tuombe. Our heavenly Father in the name of Jesus. Baba wetu wa mbinguni kwa jina la Yesu. We give you glory because of the opportunity that you gave us to be found in your house this evening. Tunakupatia utukufu kwa sababu ya kupatikana katika nyumba yako jioni ya leo. Thank you for teaching us about abiding in the lord asante kwa kutufundisha kudumu katika bwana abiding by the true vine kudumu katika msabibu wa kweli that we may be able to bear fruit ili tukaweze kuzaa matunda we recognize that being away from your presence tunatambua ya kwamba kupatikana mbali na uwepo wako will open doors for the enemy to divert our attention utafungulia shetani milango ili aelekeze umakinifu wetu mbali and we release our hearts before you na jioni ya leo tuachilia mioyo yetu kwako and as the prophet Ezekiel prayed and desired na jinsi ambavyo nabii Ezekiel aliona remove the spirit of stone from his from the lives of your people ili ukaondoe roho za mawe katika mioyo ya watu wako substitute with the spirit of flesh na kuweka roho wa mwili i pray this evening naomba jioni ya leo the spirit of hard heartedness e roho wa ugumu is going to be removed from our lives ataondolewa katika maisha yetu and that lord you may substitute with the spirit of flesh na bwana ukaweke pale moyo wa mwili the spirit that is able to listen to your voice roho ambayo itasikiliza sauti yako and hearken to your voice na kutii sauti yako i pray this evening naomba jioni hii every doorway of sin e kila mlango wa dhambi that the enemy might have opened in our lives ambao shetani amefungua katika maisha yetu we take authority by your word tunachukua mamlaka mlango lako we seal it this evening na tunaifunga jioni hii and we make a confession like david na tunafanya kutubu kama lord we want to be found in your presence kwamba bwana tunataka kupatikana katika upo wako we refuse the spirit of hard heartedness tunakataa roho wa ugumu wa moyo that lord you may Put the spirit of God in us. Kwamba Bwana ukaweke roho wa Mungu ndani yetu. That we may live to please you. Ili tukaishi tukikutupendeze. Heavenly Father, I pray this evening. Baba wa mbinguni naomba jioni. Every heart that has been wounded by the enemy. Kila moyo ambao umeumizwa na adui. This evening you have promised us about healing our wounds. Jioni ya leo umetuahidi kuponya jeraha zetu. Even as you restore us to our former state. Hata unapoturudisha sisi katika hali zetu za mwanzo. for someone listening to me this evening. Naomba mtu ambaye anasikiliza jioni hii. And in their state of helplessness. Katika hali ya kutamauka. You may send help from your sanctuary. Ukatume msaada kutoka kwa baba yako. You may heal the sick. Na ukawaponya magonjwa. You may set someone free. Ukaweka mtu huru. You may deliver someone from their sinful nature. Ukamkomboa mtu kutoka kwa hali ya dhambi. And give them to have a relationship with you this evening. Na ukawapatie kuwa na uhusiano nawe. 
Lord, we repent of every sin and transgression. The sins that we know and the sins we do not know. And we pray that the blood of Jesus may cleanse our lives. May make us white as snow. Cleanse us from negative thoughts. And to renew our minds that we may be able to understand your will. That is good. That is pleasing. And that is perfect. I thank you, Jehovah God. And I worship you. Thank you for speaking to us. I pray that our future, our destinies are going to be great. Because we are connecting with the true source of life. The source of restoration. Restore us to our former self. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We give you glory and we honor you. Be exalted and be lifted. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Amen.